Hi, Tom right here, and we're going to look at some very unusual award-winning animation today. Now, uh, this animation is very old, but it's almost as if they made it today for what's happening right now. And if you're watching this a few years from now, what's happening right now are our cities are burning. This is the, the time of great unrest in America, and yet these cartoons show us how to get through it. It's a positive, uplifting thing that is called a propo, or positive propaganda. Be back in just a minute. Hi. At this time of riots and uncertainty. Let's take a few minutes to look at the good side of America. How good we can feel about ourselves and how good we can know to push our children in the right directions. Now, these animations were made in 1954, 1957, and 1963. All three are masterpieces. All three won quite a few awards. It's amazing, when you watch them, you're going to think they were made yesterday for what's going on today. And if we could get everyone in America to watch all three of these, I think we'd stop the riots right now. The first one we're going to take a look at is called The Great Rights. Now this is produced by Cy Wexler, and Cy Wexler is, if you know who Jerry Wexler is, he's Jerry Wexler's grandfather. That's how old this is. Now this group of animators went on later, about five years later, to produce a very popular series known as Schoolhouse Rock with the, the song about how a bill becomes a law and all that. This predated that by five years. And in 1960 when they started this, there was the unrest of the John F. Kennedy administration. And this was meant to show people what the Bill of Rights meant, what protesting meant, and why it's a basic right. And in it, the little girl's trying to understand the Bill of Rights. The father is being like most of us adults, and uh, it, it's there, it's just a piece of paper. Well, he has an experience that makes him really understand what the Bill of Rights actually is. Yeah. Let's go see it. See what? The Bill of Rights. 
What's there to see? There's nothing to see. It's just a piece of paper. Piece of paper? Do you know what it says? What do you mean, do I know what it says? It says, uh, right. Uh, you know, four score and seven, uh... Don't shoot. Do you see the whites are there? How, how do you know it's there? It's always there. What would happen if the Bill of Rights disappeared? What do you mean, disappear? How could it disappear? It's a document designed for the ages, back upon the nation. Four score and seven, Tippecano and Tyler, too. Give me a liberty here, give me... What if the Bill of Rights disappeared? Disappeared, disappeared, disappeared. Hello, dear. Hi. Marv, what happened to the paper? Mm hmm? Oh, I didn't notice. Uh, somebody seems to have uh, censored it a little. Who? Um, I guess the people in charge of these things. Are they allowed to do that? Uh, no, sweetie, no, no, they're not. Well, somebody ought to complain about it. Mm hmm. Why don't you? Me? Well, you know, I'm uh, kind of busy, and, uh... Well, anyhow, they left the crossword puzzle in. Well, I think you ought Listen, to... Listen, stop pestering me, will you, honey? Will you just stop pestering me? Hey, look here. What's going on? What are they trying to do? This picture's been censored. What are they doing to the movie? What's this condemned business? Where do they get off telling me what I can see? This isn't what I came to see. Do you agree with what they're doing? They have no right to do this. Are you just going to stand? All right, buddy, do break it up. You, right you heard me. You Come on, break it up. Come on, buddy, clam up. That's a boy. Just clam up and keep moving. He's got a right to speak, hasn't he? Oh, I guess. Uh, sure. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, because he was, uh, he was talking nonsense, and, uh, I didn't agree with it. Okay, let's go. Break it up. Members of this church can attend the approved church next week. Oh, what's going on here? Hey, this is nothing. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. Come on, come on, break it up. Uh, excuse me. What are you, some kind of smart aleck? I don't want any approved church, thank you. Just my plain old regular church. Name? Marvin C. Marvin. What do you want to know for? You'll find out. That'll show him. Hey, wait. Hey, hey. Okay, okay. I'm coming. You don't have to bust in there. Hey. What do you think you're doing here? Hey. Listen, this is my house, private property. Get out of here! Nobody gave you permission to... Hey, cut that out! I mean, you're... You're getting the floor kind of messed up. Hey, watch it! Why did you do it when you didn't? What? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Have you over an hour, Mr. Warren? What? Now, why don't you make it easy on yourself and come clean? Oh, what'd I do? Look, Mac, you're in real trouble. I know, but what did I do? And we're trying to help you, right? Now, you can help us just check in. What church do you go to? Well, gee, uh, that's kind of personal, you know. How did you vote in the last election? Listen, you, uh... Ah, uh, uh, you can't ask me those kinds of questions. We can't, huh? 
No, no, no. No. It's not allowed. Constitution, uh, Bill of Rights. What's he talking about? Bill of what? Rights. Never heard of it. How's it go? Uh, uh, Bill of Rights, Bill of Rights, uh, Bill of Rights. Um, in 1492, Columbus crossed the ocean blue. Uh, uh, four score and seven years ago, our father, uh, give me liberty or Tippecanoe and Tyler too. Uh, I don't remember. Come on, confess you did it. Did what? Come on, admit it. We got a witness. Witness? A uh, witness that I did it? Who? You. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, not allowed. You, you can't force me to incriminate myself. What do you want me to say? Order in the court. How do you plead? Guilty. Who's that? Prosecutor. Guilty. 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 I want a lawyer. Denied. Listen, I didn't do it. I didn't do a thing. I'm innocent. I can prove it. I want to call witnesses. Denied. Now then. No, 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 sir. I want a jury. Call the jury. Call the jury. Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the accused. How can you reach a verdict without hearing the... We find the accused. Proceed with the verdict. We find the accused. What about my rights? Denied. Daddy, Daddy. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Bill of Rights, Sixth Amendment. Bill of Rights, Sixth Amendment. The right to no charges. The right to know the charges against me. The right to an impartial jury. The right to counsel. The right to call witnesses. Come on, confess you did it. We got a witness. Who? You. Hey, not allowed. Bill of Rights, Fifth Amendment. No person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. Bill of Rights, Fourth Amendment. Right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search and seizure. First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Let it never be said that this great and glorious heritage of ours, this noble document handed down by our forefathers whose cry was, give me liberty or give me... Disappear! Disappear! Come on! It's there. I was trying to tell you. Hey, look, us. We're part of it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to... It's there as long as we believe in it, value it, and use it. Right. So you take a good look, young lady, and remember what it's all about. If a canoe and Tyler, too. <laughs> no, honey. The right to a fair trial. 
and an impartial jury. The right to know the charges against you and be defended by counsel. The right not to be forced to bear witness against yourself. The right to be secure in your person and house and possessions from unreasonable search and seizure. The right to assemble peaceably and petition the government for redress of grievances. The right to freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of speech. The Bill of Rights, spelling out for every race and faith and creed the promise of the Constitution. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All right, second, we're going to take a look at one of a beautiful piece of animation called Brotherhood of Man, another award winner. This cartoon takes us to a world where immigrants have come and come and come into the United States to such a point that a guy wakes up and his neighborhood is full of people from all over the world, something that actually happened here in America, and he's excited about it. But his demon side keeps telling him why this won't work and why they're different than him and why there has to be separation. And by the end, this masterpiece from 1957 makes it look like we are never going to have any problems with people of other countries or other races in the United States. If you listen, I think you'll learn an important lesson that still could work today. has his own special dream of what the world's going to be like in the future. But we all know it's steadily shrinking. One of these days, we're going to wake up and find that people and places we used to just read about are practically in our own backyard. of this. Why not? It's going to be wonderful. That'll never work. We can't get along with those people. They're too different. We'll get along. We've got to. The future of civilization depends on brotherhood.
this business of brotherhood. But we're all different. Are you? Let's take a look at the facts right from the start. The first people on Earth knew only a very small section of it. They lived close together and looked alike. But pretty soon, they started to spread out. And as they drifted further apart, little differences began to appear. Most of the people of the world kept the same in-between color as their ancestors, and still do. But three groups on the very edges of the world population developed distinct differences in color. These exceptional groups gave rise to our idea of three separate races of mankind. Well, there are other differences in people besides a skin color. Yes, you find all sorts of hair, eyes, nose shapes, and sizes. But you find these same differences with it's only color and a few other frills that distinguish our three races. The Caucasian, the Negroid, and the Mongoloid. For example, there is no difference in physical strength. Sure, but... What about... Brains! There are some variations. For instance, there's a difference of about 50 cubic centimeters in the size of the brain of the average American Negro and the brain of the average American White, both of which are smaller than the brain of the average Eskimo. And the largest brain on record was that of an imbecile. So it isn't the size of a brain that counts, it's what it can do. And their tests have shown that our three average men are equal. If you take their skins off, there's no way to tell them apart. The heart, liver, lungs, blood, everything's the same. Uh, everything's the same. Heart, liver, lungs, blood... No, not blood. Blood's different. Well, there are four different types of blood. A, B, AB, and O. Patient in room 216 needs a transfusion right away. I'll give it to him. I'm his brother. Stanley! He's dead! Yes, but he wouldn't be if we'd been more scientific about it. Brother or no brother, what he needs is type A. And the right blood donor for him could belong to any race, since the four blood types appear in all races. Say, we're not really so different at all. Like you say, it's, it's just the frills. <laughs> Only, wait a minute. I, I got a question. How come we live like this? And, uh... It wasn't always that way. For instance, at a stage of history, when the so-called pure whites of Northern Europe were little better than savages, the darker-skinned mixed peoples of the Near East and Africa had flourishing cultures. And the great civilization of Northern China had begun to develop peoples contributed to civilization, reaching high levels at different times, and each learning from the experience of the other. But there were certain basic ideas which were common to all branches of the human race. Belief in the supreme being, in the home, and the family. 
how civilized a person is depends on the surroundings in which he grows up. The differences in the way people behave are not inherited from their ancestors. They come from something called cultural experience or environment. Suppose you could somehow switch two newborn infants from entirely different backgrounds. They would not inherit their real parents' cultural experience or ideas or mechanical aptitudes. Those are things you acquire. Got a match, bud? Welcome yet morning, for chai. I get it. But now that we're living so close together, we can get used to each other's ways and work together peacefully. Understanding and what I said before, brotherhood. Right. And we have to put those ideas into practice in certain very specific ways. We have to see to it that there's equal opportunity for everyone from the very beginning. An equal start in life. Equal chance for health and medical care. And a good education. chance for a job. Then we can all go forward together. Finally, we're going to take a look at a very old cartoon from 1954 that I just finished restoring. It had no color left to it. The sound was almost unlistenable. And now it's pretty good. It's not as good as the other two, but I've done a, a pretty good job bringing it up to date and bringing the colors back in it as close to what they were back in 1954 as possible. Old film turns pink when it gets very old. This was totally pink, and now it has all its colors in it. Very complicated, long process. But, in the action of men, the voice of the devil is actually played by, if you've ever watched the old show, My Favorite Martian, it's played by the Martian guy in, in My Favorite Martian years before he did that sitcom. Um, this was an important warning to people because at that point in time, many neighborhoods and cities were becoming slums as people fled to the suburbs. Of course, nowadays it's just the opposite and people are coming into the cities. Probably now it's going to be the other way again. Who knows what's going to happen? But it's a very interesting way of how you keep your neighborhood from becoming a slum. Um, I think, again, by watching this, you can learn interesting messages for today from 1954. Here we go with Men of Action. This is the story of an average sort of foe who lives in a nice average neighborhood in a nice average town. Every night he comes home to his nice average house. And in due time, he goes to sleep. But suppose that one morning, possible for a neighborhood overnight to become a slum? Well, perhaps not quite. Although, while most of us have been asleep, housing has become our number one social and economic problem. Absolutely. And getting bigger all the time. Oh, it's you. 
I might have known you had a stake in this. <laughs> a big stake. One of our most profitable fields of operation. And so easy to manage. I just check up. People do all the work. Yes, people think houses take care of themselves. But they don't. Houses left to themselves go to pieces. Well, maybe this kind of thing wouldn't happen if people understood the problem. Wouldn't make the slightest difference. We disagree. Let's go back to the beginning. Suppose we get this fellow out here, educate him a little, and see what happens. What's going on here? Just checking on your house. Who are you? You're the... Relax. I'm not him. I'm just one of his project supervisors. Division of Urban Destruction. What? Urban Destruction. We don't need any destroying around here. Beat it. I don't destroy anything. I just keep track of the schedule. People do the destroying. Did I let that paint peel? Did I crack that step? Did I neglect that rusty drain? What are you talking about? My house is the best in the whole block. Oh, what's the use? Wait a minute. You haven't told him the whole story. Keep talking. Talk's no good. This is a slum. One of my favorite projects. But wait till you see inside. Six people sleep in this one room. Eight in here. Seven in here. Cooking facilities. Plumbing. Thirty-two children in the house. And here is their playground. This is one of your favorites, huh? I can't really claim credit for it. People did it all. Do you remember how this looked 40 years ago when it was a new development called Paradise Gardens? Paradise Gardens? My grandmother and grandfather lived here. Gee, it was a nice neighborhood. They all start nice. What happened? Watch. the street wasn't wide enough for the traffic load, so... That's when Grandpa moved out, when the streetcars came. A good many moved out about then, and the neighborhood began to change. Property values went down fast. But landlords found ways to keep up revenues. One-family houses became ten-family houses. Time, poverty, and neglect did the rest. <laughs> Every step of the way, right on schedule, and I didn't lift a finger. What's your interest in all this, anyhow? This kind of neighborhood is fine for our business. <laughs> Juvenile delinquency, alcoholism, crime. Yep. This is a great little neighborhood. Too bad it won't last. Why not? There might be a fire. Why, you... Wait a minute. Is my neighborhood in that book? Sure is. Is my house in it? Yep, you're on my schedule. Well, that's one place your schedule's gonna be wrong. Well, well. And this is the day he usually plays golf. What's the matter? Are you surprised? It doesn't mean a thing. One man working by himself, what can he do? Man's got to start somewhere. Let's see, time for the evening paper. Paradise Garden. Most unfortunate. I sent flowers this morning. You hypocrite, you probably started the fire. Why should I? With all that overcrowding in violation of every safety code, it was inevitable. It was not. If I'd known when the fire was going to be, I might have been able to prevent it. Impossible. It's all right here in the book. Everything? Past, present, and future? Everything. Hey! Wait a minute. You said it didn't make any difference whether people knew or not. That's right, I did. But where's he going? He's going to City Hall to report the facts to the city officials. Ridiculous. There's City Hall. There's your boy now. Most of the facts are known to the officials. But what can they do? Their hands are tied. 
Listen to the mayor. What good is our slum clearance program if we can't prevent disasters like Paradise Gardens? We've got to do something. Do something. Now the expert will tell them what to do. That's the city planner. We're in the same difficulty as every other city in the United States. Slum clearance is not enough. We've got to prevent slums being formed in the first place. A most worthy object. And what's to prevent it? Taxes! Budget! You see, they're balking. Why, even if the planner tells them the exact trouble spots. State Street. South Street. Hogan's Alley. But we mustn't forget the public. I've got some houses on State Street. Just leave us alone. South Street is okay, too. There you have it. There's nothing to be done. Just a minute. The city planner is absolutely right. State Street, South Street, they're both in the book. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. Baloney, and there's nothing the matter with Hogan's Alley. Hogan's Alley? Holy smokes! Hogan's Alley's the worst of the lot. This afternoon, the chimney's going to fall. Right. This right. afternoon, the chimney's Order. going to fall. Order. Order. Who are you, sir? Where did you get your information? It's all right here. This is the devil's own book. Throw him out. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. And another crusader bit the dust. Give me back my book. Two o'clock. The chimney. <laughs> Everybody out of the building. The chimney's going to fall. Get out of the building! The chimney's going to fall! He says the chimney's going to fall. No fire. Chimney's going to fall in about five minutes. Get the people out of these houses. You better be right, mister. Also on 90 days. Now what do you think you're doing? I'm trying to prevent another disaster. He says the chimney's going to fall down in exactly three minutes. Arrest that man. He's a troublemaker. He says the chimney's going to fall down. It can't fall down. I own it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. That chimney should have been torn down three years ago. It's as sound as a dollar. I'll stake my life on it. When did you say it was going to fall down? In exactly one minute. <laughs> I'll show you what I think of your prediction. to prevent things like this happening from now on. But we can't do it without public support. We need a citywide group to study the whole problem. Right. And the time to start it is right now. Yeah! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we need a citizens committee on housing with representatives from every neighborhood in town. the beginning. Now things will really start to move. More groups, more organizations joining in. And who do you think is the main spark plug? I know we can win this battle because I know the fellow we've got to lick. You all know what he looks like. There. If your house needs a coat of paint, he's there. If your sidewalk has a crack in it, he's there. Find a leaky roof, he's there. Find a neighborhood without a playground. An overcrowded school, a traffic hazard, 
a zoning violation, a violation of the building code, the sanitary code. He's in every neighborhood, maybe in your own house. Wherever he is, go get him. So they went after him. Everybody went after him. And when everybody went after him, there was no place he could hide. Hello there. How's everything going? Get out of here. It didn't happen overnight, but things began to get better. blank blank committees i've got my book back now your book what good is it now no good here but this isn't the only town in america <laughs> well they've driven him out of one town but he may be on his way to your community right now he may be there already but you know how to handle him he can't stand organized groups where people work together if enough of us work together we can run him right out of the country. for today and for what's going on in our world that we've made you just a little bit smarter. Thanks for joining us. Hit! <laughs> 